Hello everyone. Today we're going to write methods that require a return value. And so this is a continuation from the previous lesson. If you haven't watched uh, the previous two lessons on methods in Java, please be sure to watch those because we will be building on top of them. As a quick review, the way that we write a method in, in Java is that first off, we have to write it um, the, the method within the scope of the class. Uh, the next thing is we write the keywords public static and so if you're not sure why we write those, make sure to watch the previous video. Public is an access specifier. Static just saves you the trouble of having to create an instance of the class. For the return type, this is where it gets interesting. We've been working with void functions all this time. This time we're actually gonna have some data type. So for example, let's say if you were creating a function like sum and we wanna be able to add one and one, it'll actually evaluate to the, to the value two. So for example, if I had this function sum and I provide in the values one and one, this whole expression will become the value two. It is the value two. If we imagine that the implementation is, you know, add the first input plus the second input. And the same way that if I were to say one plus one, we all agree that this expression right here evaluates to two, you know, we can just go ahead and substitute this with the value two. We can substitute this function call with the inputs to just the value two. And that's really what a return value is. It changes a function call with the given inputs to a specific value. It doesn't have to be a numeric, as in this case where we're adding some values. It could also be a Boolean statement to check if something's a leap year, um, to check if something's a prime number. It could be a string to see what kind of um, output you're getting back. Let's say we, um, we have like some kind of hashing function um, and then we get some kind of output back or like, um, there's, there's different ways of going about your functions. It, it, you're not limited to um, what kind of um, return type and return value you can, you can produce. So let's extend this example. We had some from start to finish, which would take an, a starting point and an ending point. And what it would do is it would total the values from the starting to the ending point. So if I provided the values three and six, it would just add three plus four plus five plus six, and it would give me the value uh, the output of 18. Um, previously, we had this as a void function, so we wouldn't actually return a value. And this, instead, what we would do is we would just print it out. Since it's void, there's nothing that can be returned. But we're going to alter this function just to show how we would write it as a non-void function. So we want it to actually return that integer output. We want the value 18 which is an integer, so I know that the return type is an integer. So we won't be printing it out. Instead, what we'll go ahead and do is we'll return the total, right? And so this should match as far as the, as far as the return type and the data type of our answer. So what is the data type of our answer? What is the data type of total? It's an integer. And the return type is an integer. Perfect. That looks like it matches to me. <clears throat> and and here in, in the variable total is where we stored our answer. So we're returning back the value 18 if we're using the inputs three and six. So now this expression will result in the value 18 if I provide the inputs three and six. If I provide three and six, I get the value 18. So notice if I run this function, <clears throat> let's go ahead and provide three and six, nothing gets printed. And why is that? That's because it's the same as if I had just written 18 here. I'm not telling it to print 18, I'm just executing 18 for some reason. So let's go ahead and print this out. <clears throat> so we're gonna write system.out.println and here we're gonna write the sum is, or the total is, there we go, 18. And let's go ahead and add one extra parentheses. And so now if we were to run this with three and six, now it prints out, it says the sum is and then this evaluates to 18. But this doesn't look as nice. This isn't typically how you would use your, uh, <clears throat> your function calls. You wanna store it in some kind of local variable so you can reference it later on. So it's a, a bit more readable. So let's go ahead and have a variable called your sum. Actually, let's call this sum just because that's what we're referring to it. It's in the input. So sum is equal to this function call, sum from start to finish with the starting and ending points. And so in this way, this function call gets evaluated. So depending on what inputs you provide, so if you provide three and six, we'll get 18. 18 gets stored into the sum. And then so I could, when I print out the statement, it will say that the sum is 18. If I replace this function call with the variable sum. And there we have it. 
And that's typically how we work with um, functions that return a value. We want to store the, the result locally into some kind of local variable. Um, that way, we can refer to it later on. Three and six, there we go. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and write another method. And this time, we're going to write a method which checks if a year is a leap year. So what are the rules to check if you have a leap year? If the year, if the year is divisible by 4 and not divisible by 100, divisible by 100, then that's, that's a leap year. So it has to be divisible by 4 but not 100 unless it is divisible by 400, divisible by 400. There we go. So what are some test cases? So yes, it's a leap year if you have the years 4, 8, 96, um, but not 100, not 100. So let's go ahead and create another section for the nose test cases. So 100 would not be a leap year. What about 200? Nope, not a leap year. 300, not a leap year. 400, yes. 400 would be a leap year because it is divisible by 400. Even though it's divisible by 100, the redeemable aspect is that it's divisible by 400. And what about 500? That's no. 600, no. And 800, yes. So now that we've gone through a, a sufficient number of test cases, let's go ahead and write this out. We're going to start with public, static, and the return type is going to be a Boolean because we need to know whether it's true or false, whether it is a leap year or it's not. And let's check if it's a leap year. Check leap year. And what do we need to provide in as some kind of input? We need to provide in a specific year. So here we have a year. The next thing that we need to do is we need to provide the logic to check if it's actually a leap year. So if there, here's where we're going to take advantage of logical operators. If the year is divisible by 4. So another way to write that is if you mod the year by 4 and you get a remainder of 0, there's no remainder, then it's perfectly divisible. But at the same time, it has to be divisible by 4 and it cannot be divisible. The year cannot be divisible. So let's go ahead and mod it by 100. And that cannot have a remainder of 0, meaning it's not perfectly divisible. The other condition, the other acceptance criteria, is if it is divisible by 400. So if it's this acceptance criteria, or if it's the acceptance criteria of it being divisible by 400, so let's go ahead and check if once we mod it, that's divisible by 400, then that's, that's really all it comes down to. If it's divisible by 4 and it's not divisible by 100, or if it's divisible by 400, then it's a leap year. So in this case, we know to return true. But let's go ahead and have um, some kind of local variable store that. So our Boolean of leap year is leap year. That'll retain the status, whether it's true or false. So if these conditions are met, if either of the conditions are met, then we know that is leap year is true. Otherwise, if it didn't meet any of those two criteria, then we know that is leap year is false. And the last thing that we do is, since we're returning a Boolean, we want to return this Boolean variable, which contains our answer. So is we're going to return is leap year. And there we have it. Now let's go ahead and call it within main. <clears throat> In order to call it, let's, let's prompt our user. Actually, let's start off with our variables. So let's create a variable called year. Let's prompt the user to enter a year, enter a year. Um, let's go ahead and get the user input. So year is equal to, using our scanner object, we're going to get the next integer. There we go. And what we want to do is we also want to store our results. So let's go ahead and store it. So our Boolean result is, is leap year. We want to store it. Uh, from our function call. So norm, we wouldn't actually just call the function and say, um, check leap year with the given year, just because that doesn't get stored anywhere. I can go ahead and print that out, but I probably want to be able to store it locally. So let's store it in the, in the local variable is leap year so that we can reference it later. And now let's go ahead and print out a statement saying that the year actually Let's do an if else statement. So if 
it is a leap year, then I want to print out. <clears throat> I want to print out the statement that yes, it's a leap year. Otherwise, we're going to print out that it's not a leap year. System done out. Uh, print line. It's kind of a longer example. I apologize for the delay. No, no it's not a leap year. There we go. And so let's go ahead and run this. So let's enter the year 100 and check that it's not a leap year. Nope. Uh, let's check 400, which should be a leap year. There we go. <clears throat> I hope that this made sense and it just shows that you're not limited to what kind of return types that you can have. When we talk about uh, later on creating classes and objects, uh, you're going to be able to return different data types. You're going to be able to create your own data types in just a few weeks. But I do hope that you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you for your patience, and I will catch you programmers later.